to welcome back to Open Studio. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, moving right along. Um, I think I, before I do the headlamp, I could do the headlamp and then do the bars, but I think to make my life easy along these edges, I'm gonna do the bars first, the crossbar, and then this the the other handlebar down here doesn't come in contact with the with the headlight and the lamp. So uh, just by doing those two, we'll, we'll kind of make it make it work to start. Um, overall, these are kind of a grayish color. They are they have a nice dark like outline around them almost. Um, so I I want to make sure that's really crisp around the outside edge. So what I think I might do for this is um, cut out a little template. Um, I think that might be the way to go. I could mask it off um, with, you know, a little bit of uh, tape, but I think it's just going to be it's it's going to be more continuous if I kind of do the um, the cutout for it. Meaning, um, it'll blend a little bit better. If I have one spot that has like real strong, like sharp edges from a from a taped mask, then it's going to stand out, and I don't want that. So I haven't used tape really anywhere else on this painting, so I want to kind of keep that going. All right, so what I want to do is just zoom in just on this part here. Yeah, it'll work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the the darker areas, the gray. Uh, there's the you know the clamp on here that runs across for for whatever is going on over there. Um, I'm not worried about that. It looks like these handlebars are also. Why does it look like this is wrapped? Maybe. It might be a cloth wrap on this for whatever reason, but I'm just going to kind of paint what I see. Um, I'd love to figure it out, but um, sometimes it's just not as possible to do that. It's just better to kind of, if you can figure it out, great. If not, just, just paint what it looks like. And I'm doing that. You can't see it. You guys can yell at me if you want. It's totally cool. I love it. So yeah, so this um, this little clamp that holds on. What is that? Oh, it's the it's a rear view mirror. That's the clamp for the mirror. It goes up. So that that is held on by two probably stainless steel clamps, and and those are bright white. So um, or they're real shiny. So I don't need to base those, and I'll do those separate. I just want to really get the actual grip. Uh, do I want to get the bolt? Yeah, yeah, I can do all this. Leaving, the, again, the nut that holds this, the, the um, clamp that ultimately holds the rear view mirror, the side mirror, um, is, well, actually, you know, I can cut it out, too. It looks like the bolt is stainless, too. It's real shiny. But I'll just, I'll just adjust for it. And actually, you know what I could do here? No, I'll do that, too. All right. So for the end of the, the screw that comes through here, the bolt itself, it's darker than the hand, the, the grip behind it, but I'll, I'm going to cut out, I'll do kind of both at, at the same time with this one cutout. I'll show you how I do that in a second. So first I'm going to cut out the stuff that's in the front, a uh, little section right there, and then I'll just run off the page. This is the, um, the bar for that side mirror, so whatever that, you know, Hold on. So that's all I need for that. I am going to cut out the rest of this grip when we get there, but I'll do that after. All right, so the next thing is this cross beam here. And this just looks like it is wrapped. Oh, that's neat. It's wrapped right here, just on the end with some sort of cloth or looks like, yeah, it looks like a cloth tape. That's neat. Okay, good. But that I don't care about that right now after all that. This... Uh, acorn nut right here looks like it's stainless as well. Actually, let me turn that off. That way you get the whole thing. I can turn that back on later. Um, this acorn nut looks stainless too. It's bright, you know, shiny and all that. So we'll leave that off for now. Just cut out what's behind it. This top edge is straight. The bottom edge has some sort of either a dent or a hiccup in it or something. So use the ruler for the top so we get that nice and straight. So for these cutouts with the ruler, even though the ruler does a great job at keeping the knife straight, I make two or three cuts with the blade. I don't try to go through the paper all at once. This is heavy duty copy paper. 
And there's always a chance that, you know, it'll catch and rip and do all kinds of funky stuff. So I take my time with it and just like make multiple cuts in it, especially on a straight. Uh, and that just helps me kind of keep everything in line. For this guy here, the bottom one, again, there's like this hiccup right in the middle of it. So I'll cut to that hiccup so that my line is straight. And I just said all that about cutting two or three times and I just cut right through it. So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. <laughs> and here is that little dent or hiccup or whatever that is. And that's it. So that comes right out. So we're good. I'm not worrying about this other bar yet. I'll do that separately. Uh, but, 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 and there's a good shot of that, the other clamp too, that holds it on. And like I said, it must be stainless because it's bright silver. What could be, I don't know what could be. Yeah, it's probably stainless. Same thing with the, the top of the fork here. That's likely stainless as well. I think I got everything. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna work. I really shouldn't do that. I really shouldn't put the cutting mat on the painting because it's gonna end up getting scuffed and scratched and banged around and I don't really want that. But again, sometimes, you know, I'm not thinking. Okay, so this will line up. I know this will line up perfectly because of the HD stencil. So what I want to do is I want to get some jumbo magnets on this. And I call them, I don't know if I've said it before, I call these neodymium magnets, these particular ones, these are the jumbo magnets. They're larger than the other neodymium magnets I usually use, like these little guys. I call them jumbo because they really stick really, really well. They're really strong magnets. So they go through this eighth inch... Um, ampersand board really nicely. Now I don't have to really put a magnet on both sides. I, in fact, I don't want to because they'll snap together because they're so strong. There's more of an attraction to each other than there is through the board to the steel. So I want to try to just deal with one magnet, but all that does is it holds the top when I go to spray this. That's really all it does. All right, so I want to pick a gray for this to kind of do the whole thing. And it can be a darker gray because these are well, actually, what does the other one look like first? Mm, same. Okay. Yeah, it could be a slightly darker gray. Uh, I need an airbrush. That would help. Here we go. Lovely. Look at that. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the same that, if you guys remember, back at the very beginning, as soon as I can find it. Where to go? Been so long since I used it. So you know how remember how I mixed the, the tan brownish color for the for most of the rust for this painting and I had a separate bottle of it. That's what I'm going to use for this. Even though it's not quite the same, I, I'm going to adjust it. But I'm not going to do that if I can't find it. What the heck did I do with it? It should be right here. Oh, it's laying down. That's why I can't find it. Okay, there we go. So there it is right there. It's all ready to go. So I'll shake that up really well because this is, remember, this is, I know it was a while ago. This is, <laughs> this is a uh, full strength. So this is all just paint. There's no reducer in this at all. So I know I'm gonna have to reduce it. I know I have to shake it and all that fun stuff. But this is nice because it's like a, just, it's just gonna be a good starting color. It's brown, but it's got a lot of black in it. And this cap is not working. It's all clogged up, so. I'm just going to grab a, without the bubble, I'm going to just grab a drop of this. I can't see what I'm doing here. Here we go. Do, 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 do. This is super thick. Here it comes. So just a drop, or as close to a drop as I can get with this being like this. So I'm going to get a lot of paint here, way more than I'm going to need, but that's okay. Now, to get this to spray, I'm really going to have to reduce this because it is 100%. So I'm just going to grab some of the reducer. Where everything went? <laughs> I literally, there it is. It's in the wrong spot. I know I'm a hot mess today. Sorry. Here we go. Bunch of reducer, and this is reducer. It's again 1 to 10. I need to mix up more of this. This is 1 to 10. One part paint and uh, 10 parts reducer. No, one part... 40, 50. You guys can just shut me off now. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't know what's going on. All right. Mix this up. Now this needs a little bit of black in it to make it more just kind of grayish. So I'm going to mix in the reducer first. Make sure that's really well 
mixed and ready to go. And I'll just grab a little bit of the reduced black and add a couple drops of that till I get till I get it roughly where I, where I need it. Obviously, it's easier, it's easier to add a few drops of black and then see what it looks like and then keep going because if I put too much black in it, then that just means a lot of extra adjustments. That looks good. I think we'll go with that. Okay. Now we got it. So, let's zoom you guys in. Still don't need the palette cam. I'll turn that on when we need it, if we need it in this episode. Let's get you guys a little bit more centered. That looks good. All right. <clears throat> So again, I have the magnet holding down the other side of the template, and I'm gonna use my finger to hold down this side. And I'm just gonna really, there it is. There's a lot of liquid on there. Let that dry for a second. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna go over this really lightly. What I'm wanna do is I wanna get it to the point you guys can see it. Yeah. I want to get it to the point where I'm, I've shifted it to that gray color, but I can still kind of make out the details of the HD stencil. And I'll let that, I'll let that dry and I'll just come back over to here. Same thing. I hold down the side that doesn't have the magnet and then the magnet will do the rest on the other side. Multiple passes again, just building it up real slow. And that keeps it really clean underneath. If I hose this thing down and blast a bunch of paint on there, it's gonna creep underneath, which it might've done here because I did hit it kind of hard. Um, but as long as I go with lighter passes and let the paint just kind of dry as I go, um, everything works out really, really well. Okay, so without changing that, I'm gonna use another brush for the next part. And I'm gonna put the highlights on here. And so it goes, the base color highlights the dark, and then it's pretty much done. I don't think I have to hand, well, I do have to hand paint a little bit on this, but not too much. So let's put the highlights in. So for that, I'm gonna use a little bit of white, but I'm gonna use a reduced white. There we go. Okay, so this is a reduced white, so it's gonna be really transparent, which is just what we want. There is a really cool kind of a yellowish, the same yellowish color that appears in the, in the forks as well, appears on these handlebars. So I'm thinking it's some sort of primer or the remnants of some sort of primer. There's also red on here too, which is interesting. So I'm gonna kind of grab everything. I think I am gonna have to hand paint the red in, but I'll do the, actually, do I wanna do this? The reason why I'm hesitating is because that, that light area has a really defined sharp edge. Yeah, I don't think I wanna do this. All right, so we're good. I'm gonna save the white for a second. Jump back to this brown color. And I'm gonna get rid of some of it because there's way too much of it now. All right, so I've got the same remnants of that brown in here. I'm just gonna add a bunch of black to it and make that really dark. And I'm gonna also gonna thin it out too. So this will be almost black, but it'll have a cast of that brown in it too. I am definitely gonna have to mix up some more of this. So I use this one to 10 mix a lot. Um, and this, this in the one to five mix I use a lot. So it's, again, it's grab a bottle here. Yeah. So it's UVLS gloss 4050, which is the stuff here. That's the one part for that. And then the 10 part of it is 4011 reducer. So I say it's one to 10 mix, but it really isn't because I use a scale a way you know like a little um, gram scale to to mix out the paint the paint has a higher weight than the reducer so even though it's one part paint to ten parts reducer it's really not like a, a true one to ten mix but what it does is it gives me a consistent mix every single time 
So I care more about the actual ratio than I do about the actual, you know, weight of the of the components. Where if you're doing it as um, like if you're mixing automotive paint, you mix it by parts, and, and you're not doing it by weight. So. All right, so there we go. So now this is going to look really black to everyone in the cup, but it's really not. It's got that brownish to it. So now I'm going to work on the bottom half of this. And then after all this is done, then I can put that strip of worn paint in that's on this bar. The other one doesn't have it. Or maybe it does, but you can't see it. So I'm just going to build up the bottom side of that where the shadow is. Again, just going real slow. I don't want this to bleed out underneath. And then the top side of this too. Just add a little bit of a, this will add, because it's a cylinder, it's going to add a little bit of shape to it by kind of hitting both the top and bottom edge. And then on the other one, I don't think I can get you any closer. On the other one, it's got all kinds of cool details in it that are just like darker. I can use this color. Do I want to even do this? Because it's going to be annoying. Yeah, I can pull this off now. I don't think I need this anymore. Go up here. Sweet. So that missed up there. That's unfortunate. But good. Yeah, there, there's a way to that I can fix that too. So what I need to do, I need to put on the glove so I don't put my hand on this. So now what I can do, actually this is kind of kind of paintbrushy too. Alright. Well, I'll do what I can with this. So I'm going to just kind of add the darker areas on this, the texture from the wrapping a little bit. I got to put some hand painting on this too. But this will just set things up for me. And again, it's all, it's, it's a, it's a relying on the strengths of the, um, of each tool, you know, like I, I can push this airbrush as, as far as it'll go, as far as tightness, you know, I'll get, I'll get as tight a line as I can get, but then when I switch over to the air or the paintbrush, I'll be able to get even tighter than that. But what I can't do with the paintbrush as easily as I can with the airbrush is that blending. So I blend as much as I can with the paintbrush and then take it from there with the airbrush and you get literally the best of both worlds. And that's, that's, for me, that's what really works. And I know I keep saying it, I keep harping on it, but it's, it's true. All right, so I am missing some stuff here. The top of that bolt is actually background above that. Um, there's that extra thing from a misalignment, maybe. That's okay. Oh, I gotta get the bottom side of this. Let me use a template for that. I said, I just wanna Scott's templates. If I can get it out. Here we go. Nice. Love to hand paint that. All right. So what I'm going to do to, to fix these few little areas, like this area, little white area above, and then this where it's misaligned here, um, we can use a paintbrush for that to start. And I, what I got to do is I got to take the curse off it. So this background, it's been so long. The background, I think, is just gray, just white and black. If I was smart, that's what it is. So now I can turn this back on. So what I'm going to use is just white and black here, make up a gray. I'm going to start what looks lighter because I know what's going to happen. It, it always looks too light on the palette and you move it to the board and it's too dark. So this is definitely too light, but a little bit darker. Again, I say this all the time. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take the curse off of this line here. So it's right now, it's the white of the board underneath. So I don't want that. So I'm just going to take the curse off. I'm not going to try to match the background color to color exactly. That's way too light. Okay, good. I'd rather creep up on it this way than have it be too dark and then have to reverse the whole process. Let's try this. Better, much better. 
So this brings it down to a scale that's, or the, you know, the value is a little bit closer to the background. It's still too light, but that's, that's totally okay. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so now I can take it down another step. What I also, well, I'll use this as background. I could do two things here. I could grab the, the, the color of the bar, that brown color, and add that and make the bar a little bit wider. Again, in the end of the day, it's not gonna, someone's not gonna say, you know, your, your cross beam there is a millimeter too thick from what it should be. I mean, some people do do that especially when I was doing a lot of aviation art there was a lot of people I called them rivet counters and um, they would have no problem coming up to you and telling you that you have too many rivets on the side of that plane um, and I'm sure there are those people with with the bikes and cars too but um, but I don't run into them as often as I did with the airplane folks so so again I could make that bar a little bit thicker and someone someone who knew would say hey that's you know too thick or I could just do it the right way and you know do the background so what I'm doing is now I'm just adding a teeny bit of teeny wit a teeny bit of black to this gray color and I'm going to start to lower this down till it matches And sometimes you get it, you know, pretty early on, like like this is pretty close right now. And then sometimes it just it takes a few passes, you know, it takes a few a few shots to get it there. This I know has a little bit extra black, it just mixed in, I saw it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this to bring it back. And I gotta clean this brush off. But already it's looking it's looking pretty good. And then what I'll do at the end, which you'll see if I if I remember properly. What I'll do is I'll get the original cutout of this and I'll then I'll lightly respray the background over the entire painting and that will do two things. One, it'll take care of like up in this top corner, we can see the bright edge of the uh, ampersand board where it's worn off. It'll clean up that but it'll also kind of take the end, end of the repairs and just kind of blend them in. So it's kind of a two four in a way. But I won't do that till the end because I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be other stuff I'll have to fix in the background along the way. So if I do that now and fix it, then I'll just have to do it again later. So we'll just, uh, we'll just go with this. There we go. That is sufficiently blended. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Now that I've got that color and it's really close, now I don't have to really sneak up on this one because I've got it right here. So this whole little block right here needs to be background color. And then this is the handle, the, the, the grip right here, so I don't have to do that. But that little square right there, I don't know why I missed it. Probably didn't know what it was, but that is all set now. And then since I have that background color in, in the palette right now, I can quickly run around and check to see if there's anything else that needs to be adjusted, but I think we're looking pretty good there. There's a couple little spots here. Check again. There we go. All right, good. Okay, now we can move on. So I need to, um, the last step is I need to add a real, like, dark edge on, on this, on the crossbar here. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to grab that copy again, line that up, drop the magnet on that. I can put this one on the bottom this time because um, I'm not painting the top, I'm just painting the bottom. Let's clean out the brush. Add a little bit of black. Let's go with uh, this one. So I didn't even wash out the brush. There's still... I emptied all the brown out of it, but I didn't like act actively clean it out. So what I'm going to have is a black, a real nice black, and it'll have just a hint of that, that brown color in there, which is perfect. That's going to work out well. Mix that up real well. There's still brown in the brush, so i got to flush that out first before I go and use this. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just back flush it into the brush, and that'll mix that brown and the black, and everything will be nice it out. So what I want is this bottom half of this bar to be really, really dark. Mm -hmm. 
And again, I'm just taking my time with it. You know, I'm gonna put another magnet on here so it doesn't squeal. Just taking my time, letting it build up. And this brush, this airbrush, this Micron C, will really spray this black with a lot of control. So I'm able to really build up just that edge, which is great. There is some of that going on on the other side too, on the other bar. So we'll just readjust this since I didn't line it up very well for the other side. Drop the magnet back on there, that's good. And then I'll just give this a little hit. Sorry about the squealing. Good, that's good. Okay, just enough time for some highlights on this and then we'll start the paint. Yeah, lovely. Good, good, good. Yeah, again, you can just see that you can see the halo of that repair up here. You're not going to see that at all when I'm done. I may in the end, because I don't, I'll have to go through the file, but I may have to recut out this whole thing. I think I still have it. I should have it when I did the background. So then that's great. I can just drop it in. But on the off chance that I didn't cut the, this out right, which is why that that misalignment is there, then I would cut this again. Essentially, all I'd need to really do is cut out like down to here. This is fine all in the bottom section down. I can't see it. This is all fine down in here, the background in here. No, maybe not. There's some scratches there too. So I'll probably just, yeah, I'll just do the whole thing. Okay. All right, next, 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 next. Yeah, let's put that paint in, I think. Because um, that, that's perfect. That's dark, just dark enough. You guys are seeing it at an angle, but if I tilt this, you get the right color. So it fits in really nice. Okay. I don't think I finished the top of this either. There's a lot to do here, kids. All right. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So I'm going to start with that yellow. The primer, this primary yellow color. So I need um, yellow oxide for that that over here and it's a grayed out yellow so get some of that going it's far enough white and I'll grab some black a little bit more yellow a little bit more white maybe a little bit of orange that's good Yeah, this is all like right along here. It's all just damaged paint. So I'm just gonna kind of move that along. It doesn't have enough white in it. And the reason why I know that is because it's too transparent. So I'm gonna have to do this again. So add the white first. This will give it a little bit more body. If it has mostly yellow in it, then it's, the yellow is really, really transparent. So that's not gonna cover and it's just not gonna do what I need it to do. So just repeat the process. A little bit of black in there to deaden it and a touch of red oxide. That should be better. So now when I paint this on here, it should stand up on there. Yeah, there it is. And I just wanna keep it rough. So it's like the worn bit of paint. This is still pretty transparent, but it'll definitely work because the middle of this has like a reddish color in it too. So I may have to go over this a couple times, but it's gonna work. If this is really going to be a pain in the butt, um, I could do this in white first and then just tint it the yellow. But um, I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to get away with this, with doing it in one shot. And I think I am. It's, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's covering with a couple passes, so that's good. Yeah, that's lovely. Good. Okay, so we're going to leave it there for this week. And then when we pick it up next week, we're going to finish up that, that yellow, put the rust-colored red in it, and um, just keep rolling with this. All right, so for Steve Lee and Tech, uh, I do that all the time, and I can't edit it out of this one. <laughs> anyway, for Steve Lee and Open Studio, thanks for dropping by. Um, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Um, and don't forget to grab that subscribe button and also the bell icon, and you will get all the updates. All right, so I'll catch you guys and girls on the next one. Thanks a lot.